You've heard the saying, the sky's the limit. Well, we're going to show you that phrase in action as we talk about the good things Alaska Airlines is doing with the jet that has minority students drawn on its side. They are giving students free miles to visit historically black colleges and universities, as well as helping to promote racial equity. They've partnered with the United Negro College Fund to do just that. And as the saying goes, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. We'll tell you more about UNCF and that partnership coming up. James Thomas, first of all, thank you very much for being with us. You are the Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for Alaska Airlines. What do you do? Wow, that's, that's a pretty loaded, loaded question, Mark. Uh, you know, I think the, the easiest way I explain to people, I think what just diversity practitioners do in general, um, is we try to make sure that as we think across the organization and the business, anything that touches people, uh, and those are generally in, in two different groups, they're your employees, and for most companies, they're your, your guests or your consumers. How do we ensure that the things that touch those individuals are equitable, that they're fair, that they're inclusive, and that everybody feels like they can see themselves um, represented in those things uh, and can feel a sense of belonging with that brand or organization. And so here at Alaska, you know, for our employees, I want to make this a, a great place where employees feel like they can come to work every day and do their best work. And I believe in turn that that's going to mean we're going to give great service to our guests that fly on our planes. Um, and I want to make sure that if you're a person flying on an Alaska plane, that you feel welcome. You feel like this is a brand and an airline that you want to be a part of. And if we can do that, Hopefully we'll, we'll make a little money doing it and hopefully we'll build some really great relationships with people. So in the simplest terms, that's what I do. Uh, let's talk about this jet. Where did that <laughs> idea come from? You know, it's, it started uh, as a result of obviously what happened uh, last summer with, with everything that was happening in the world, particularly around, you know, George Floyd's death, which, you know, today is the one year anniversary of that. Um, and, you know, we really did a lot of listening sessions with our employees, particularly our, our Black partner network, which we call ABIA, um, to really understand, you know, what are we missing? What do, what do we need to be thinking about and doing? And then simultaneously, uh, you know, we were also having conversations with UNCF. We've, we've had a, a relationship with them for over 15 years. And so we were being challenged on both ends to really think about, you know, how can we take this conversation of racial equity to the, to the next level and to new heights? Um, and so being an airline, you know, our, our airplanes are one of our, our greatest assets. And we thought, you know, what better way to really make a statement and to make a bold statement than to use one of our airplanes to really show our commitment to racial equity you know, as I think about this play, Mark, for me, this is important because in my lifetime, I've never seen a plane that has black and brown people painted on the side of it. And to my knowledge, this is the first plane of its kind that when you look out there and you look in the skies, you won't see another plane that looks like it. And for me, that that's inspirational, you know, and I, I hope that the black and brown, black and brown kids that look at this picture, at this plane, and, and even adults that look at this plane are inspired because they see themselves on this plane. And it's, it's something different. You know, we see Disney characters on planes. We see lots of other uh, animation things on planes. We see all sorts of things on planes, but I don't know that we've ever seen black and brown faces on plane. And to me, that's, that's important. And, and when I think about this, that's why this matters. And that's why I think this is, this is something that I want people to know is serious for us. And this isn't just, you know, something that we're doing. You know, uh, James, when you think of what you're doing, um, a person tends to think of places like Atlanta or Newark or, uh, uh, but not Alaska Air. Uh, um, what made Alaska Air head in that direction, even think that way? 
Yeah, I, I think it's, again, it's, it's this having this commitment to wanting to ensure people can see themselves uh, at Alaska and, and with our brand. And again, it, it was knowing that we needed to do more, Mark, than just say it was important to us, but actually uh, show it and, and do it. And, and what I like to say is that, you know, this plane is, it's kind of putting our money where our mouth is. And, and it's certainly just one part of what we're doing. Um, but it's a, it's a big statement. And I think we want people to look at this plane and see themselves represented in it because I believe representation matters. Um, and we want people to know that this is not something that's going away. Um, this plane is going to be in our line of service for 10 years. So we want people to know that this is, this is something we're serious about. This is something that's not going away. This is something we're, we're going to continue to do. And we want people to be able to see themselves represented in this plane. That, uh, the plane has quotes from Martin Luther King, Nelson Mandela, Maya Angelou. Why them? You know, I think obviously there, there are three individuals that are uh, just great individuals and, and have really had some, some words that I think a whole lot of people can, can really think of that have, have kind of stuck with them. You know, I think the quote from Martin Luther King, the time is always right to do what is right, was just, uh, it was applicable to this conversation around racial equity. And, and the time is, is now, the time is, is right now to have this conversation. And so, as you mentioned, uh, the quote from Martin Luther King Jr. and then Nelson Mandela are on the uh, external parts of the plane. Um, and then the quote from uh, Maya Angelou is on the seatback card um, that our, our guests that are flying on the plane will also be able to see, in addition to kind of learning a little bit more about the 14 students that are portrayed uh, on the side of the plane. You mentioned being partnered with uh, the United Negro College Fund. From their end, what do they bring to the table? You know, I think, again, we've had this longstanding partnership with them for over 15 years. And, you know, we really we really wanted to highlight, you know, that relationship specifically with them and the great work that they're doing to uh, kind of help underrepresented uh, young people become productive college graduates. And so we thought, what a great way to uh, be able to spotlight this partnership with them uh, and highlight that relationship with them. Uh, on the plane, you know, what we're going to be doing over the next 10 years is we're going to be donating a million miles to UNCF uh, each year to uh, help fly students to do college tours at historically black colleges and universities. And so, you know, it's, it's really great to, to, to partner with the, the biggest, uh, you know, educational uh, organization that's doing this work uh, around young people and, and particularly young people of color. Um, so it, it, it felt like a, just a really great fit uh, to, to, to amplify this, this, this relationship with them. Uh, what did you do before Alaska Air? So, you know, I, I feel like um, I've, I've been pretty much with Pacific Northwest brands. I, I grew up uh, with Nordstrom. I spent almost 20 years there um, doing a host of different jobs. Uh, at Nordstrom, both as a, a rack store manager and a full line store manager. And then I spent about 10 years in the, the DNI space there, five of those leading the program. Um, I've worked at Starbucks, um, which is another prominent Pacific Northwest brand. And I, I led DNI for the US business, really supporting our, uh, at the time, company operated and licensed stores. And then most recently, I came from the wine industry. Uh, I worked with St. Michelle Wine Estates, um, supporting uh, our wineries uh, across. California, Oregon, Eastern and Western Washington. So I feel like I've, I've had a little bit of an opportunity to do this work in some pretty prominent brands, all focused around creating great experiences for, for customers and employees. Um, and now, you know, super excited to get to do this in the airline industry with, again, uh, my favorite airline. James, when you were younger, did you ever, before all of this, did you know your life would unfold the way it has? I didn't. Um, I tell people I, I actually kind of fell into this this work, Mark. Um, you know, I fell into diversity before diversity was a thing, and um, I had I had my whole life planned out in front of me. I, I started as a biology major. I wanted to be a dentist, and then I quickly realized why do I want to look in people's mouths every day? 
you know, uh, that, that, that doesn't feel fun. And, you know, started down this path of, uh, of starting in, in, in business and in the professional uh, workplace. And I had a leader at the time that came to me and said, you know, I think you'd be really great to do this, this DNI work. And, and honestly, I had no clue what it was. I said, what is it? What, what do they do? Um, and so he got me in touch with some people. And as I learned more about it, um, I think I really realized how it spoke to me personally, um, you know, as a black male, as a person who has felt excluded, who has felt marginalized, um, who has not oftentimes turned on the TV and seen myself. I, I think it, it resonated for me and, and it felt like something that I could do that was going to be more than a job that when I lay my head on my pillow at night and I feel like, you know, what's been my contribution to the world, I feel like I can look back at my life and, and know that, you know, I, I did work that was meaningful and that was important. Um, and that, you know, I, in essence, I kind of took the baton from all the people who've been doing this work before me. Um, and I, I tried to run the, the race in my life while I had the baton so that I can hand it off to the next person that's going to come after me. Man, that sounds, that's poetry. You mentioned <laughs> pillow. I bet you sleep well at night. James Thomas, you are a good thing. Alaska Airlines is a good thing. Thank you so much for being on All Things Man. Thank you, Mark. I appreciate it. Maurice Jenkins Jr., you are the Executive VP and Chief Development Officer for the United Negro College Fund. For people who don't know, what does UNCF do? Well, thank you, first of all, for having me on. Um, the United Negro College Fund is an organization that directly fundraises and supports and as an advocate for historical black colleges and universities. There are 105 historical black colleges and university, and there are 59 of them are private. We support the 37 members of the UNCF family that we support in raising money for scholarships, unrestricted and restricted money for them with their programs, as well as any of the other needs that they have for their institution. So that's what we do. We've been around since 1944. We were founded by Dr. Frederick D. Patterson and Frederick D. Patterson was the president of Tuskegee University. It was called then Tuskegee Institute, but Tuskegee University, and along with 20 other, 27 other colleges and universities joined him. And um, we became the, 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 uh, the voice for fundraising for those member institutions. And so that's what the United Negro College Fund is. Why did you decide to partner with Alaska Airlines? Oh man, that's a that's a that's a no brainer for us. Um, we have this in Seattle, and they're very much engaged and involved with our office there in helping us raise money for um, our historical black colleges and for um, young people of color out of the Seattle and all of the the northwest part of America. And so they sponsor all many of our activities. They're involved with us with those. And so they're on our leadership council um, and they manage and work with us into our portfolio project um, as well as they have other in going on. So it was an easy win for us. They, they came to us and said, we wanna help, what can we do? And we, they are partner. They are actually one of our partners and we uh, just love the work that they do and, and how they've been such a big supporter of the United Negro College Fund and historical black colleges and universities. What are lift miles? The miles is a program that, um, well, they just agreed to do a uh, hundred thousand miles um, to give to UNCF for the next 10 years uh, per year. Um, and those miles help students go to college fair, um, go to summits that we have a program um, that innovative summit program that's in Silicon Valley. And they provide transportation to and from that particular um, summit. Um, there are other, um, they give scholarships through miles where they have the young people can go 
from Seattle to their given their chosen school. And that will be the, the transportation there and the transportation back to and from school. Um, they also, if there's an emergency and need to come home, they provide that. So it's just a wonderful program, and especially for our young people, that one of the major expenses that they will have, especially if they're coming out of the Seattle area or North Northwest area and going to the historical black colleges, because as you well know, most of the historical black colleges and universities are located in the Southern part of America. Maurice, I, I kind of hit on this before, but if there is someone of color in high school who uh, can't afford to go to college, but they want to get a scholarship through the pairing of Alaska Air and UNCF, what do they do? Well, the we we offer we run four hundred scholarships. Um, programs and, and initiatives, but we generate probably in a given year we give out thousand scholarships to young men and women who um, who was in need. That does not even scratch the actual surface of what's really needed. Um, oh, we receive about one hundred and twenty five thousand applicants a year of individuals who need um, financial assistance, and almost ninety percent of our young people who attend our uh, historical black colleges and universities that have some type of financial assistance. So if a young person out of uh, Seattle, for an example, where Alaskan Airlines is headquartered, and they would like to get a, a Alaskan Airlines scholarship, then they will go online and all of our scholarships are available through uncf.org. You go on and you look under scholarships and they will go do the search that they need to do to find the scholarships that they're eligible for and, um, and go from there. But everyone can, and all of them have the various criteria that they require um, for those scholarships and then that's what. Now, that, um, that project that I was telling you about, portfolio project, that's what it does. It helps those young people find scholarships. And one of the ones that they definitely are, are, are have an opportunity to apply for is certainly the Alaskan um, Airlines. Uh, Maurice, uh, on a different note, you and I are brothers. We went both went to the University of Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that happen for you? I, I, how did that happen to me? <laughs> I am... Well, you're from Maryland. I'm from I'm from um, Washington D.C. And I started out. Um, I'm from Washington, and I went to high school there and everything. And I started out at Howard University. And I tell you, it didn't work out for me. So my mom, in the sense that it didn't work, because I focus, because <laughs> I was right there from D.C. And so my mom said, I, you, "You can't go far, but you you're gonna have to you're gonna have to come out of there. You're gonna and you're gonna need to finish on time." <laughs> so. I wind up at the University of Maryland. Now, if you remember the time period, um, and, and I went to school in, in, in the late 70s. So what that, what that meant was there was a lot of scholarships out there for minorities to go to majority institutions. So I had um, um, scholarships and things that were offered to me. And so that's what I just, uh, decided to do. And so that's where I wind up. And it was an incredible experience. Um, I, I made the best of it, um, being the president of student government, all, all the things that I wanted to do, um, I did do it there. And um, it was just incredible. And so here, here I am. <laughs> Years later. Go Terps. Go Terps. Go Terps, Maurice right? Maurice <laughs> Jenkins, Jr., the executive vice president and chief Development Officer for the United Negro College Fund. Thank you so much for being with us and all the best, my friend. Thank you. Don't, don't forget, a mind is a terrible thing to waste, but a wonderful thing to invest in. Thank you. Benjamin Davis Jr. was the first black general in the United States Air Force. His father, Benjamin Davis Sr., was the first black general in the U.S. Army. Ben Jr. was born December 18, 1912, in Washington, D.C. He attended the Military Academy at West Point. In 1941, the Roosevelt administration 
ordered the War Department to create a black flying unit. Captain Davis was assigned to the first training class at Tuskegee Airfield, hence the name Tuskegee Airmen. During the war, his 332nd fighter group was called the Red Tails for the distinctive markings on their planes. In 1960, Davis earned the rank of Brigadier General. Although retired, Davis was promoted to four-star general by President Bill Clinton in 1998. Benjamin O. Davis, Jr. died at the age of 89 on the 4th of July, 2002. Well, that's the show. Thanks for watching All Things Men. If you want to be part of the conversation, join us on Twitter or Facebook at All Things Men BNC. We'll see you next time.